Hey and welcome back to DCOM Network, I'm Dave. In this video I'm going to talk about the iData Error Info interface in WPF using the MVVM pattern. I thought that this deserved kind of its own video because validation is a common um, thing that we have to solve in applications and I get a lot of questions about it and there's also a lot of different articles on the internet that tell you how to do validation in many different ways. Specifically, the way we're going to do validation is actually, you can find it in an MSDN article, so you can search up um, MVVM. And it's actually this first MSDN article here. You could download the demo um, source code. So the validation that we're gonna be doing is pretty much the same as in this demo source code, but I wanna pull it out and do a video on it. Um, so you're not distracted from this application as a whole because this whole application focuses on the basics of the entire MVVM pattern. I want to focus just on validation. And I'm also going to answer a few basic questions that I get asked. So in my demo project, I have, for the lack of my imagination, just a model, um, a view model, and they both implement I notify property changed. And then I just have a, a view. So I'm going to answer a couple of the questions that I get asked um, real quick before we move on. Let me pull those up here. Okay, so question number one. When is it appropriate to implement I notify property changed on a model versus a view model? The answer to that is it really depends on your needs. Um, my rule of thumb is implementing I notify property changed on a model should be based on the decision of whether or not it needs to be interactive. Meaning, do you need to set values on properties of your model from the user interface? If your model is a read-only um, model and you're never going to be changing the values of the properties, you do not need to implement this interface because WPF will bind to those values one time and then from, you know, if it's read-only, you don't need those interactive updates. Um, if it is an interactive model and you do need to change the values up from a user interface, then definitely implement it. As far as implementing it on your view model, 99% of the time, your view model is going to need that at some point. So. It's very rare using the MVVM pattern that your view model would not need this interface. Question number two, should I implement iData error info on my model or my view model? So this gets into validation a little bit. And again, it kind of depends on your needs. Sometimes you need to validate properties on your view model itself. Um, so you should definitely implement the interface there. And then sometimes you want to encapsulate your validation for your model in the model itself. You know, if I have a customer model, I want to validate like customer name. And we're actually going to do that um, in code here, then I want to encapsulate that in the model itself. Separation of concerns, encapsulation, all that good stuff. So again, it just depends. Um, one common practice that people do is they will implement iData error info on the view model and wrap the model inside the view model. Um, I personally don't like that pattern. It's um, a lot of duplicate work, but it's one way to propagate your validation from your model up to your view model so you have that information readily available. Um, but let's dive right in. So we're going to create just a simple customer name property. Oops. Okay, easy enough. Um, the next thing that we want to do is we want to implement the actual interface itself, which again, just iData error info. And I usually implement this explicitly just to keep this property um, off my model because the error property itself we will not actually be using. And then the same thing for the indexer. And these cannot have accessibility modifiers when implemented explicitly. So we're not going to use this error property, so we're just going to return null for that and hide that out of the way. Um, the next thing we're going to do is change this from column name to property name to make it a little bit more specific. And we're also going to keep track of the properties that we validate. like so, and then in our indexer, the way this works is when WPF needs to validate a property, it will 
call the indexer, pass the property name um, to it as the parameter, and then we execute our validation there. So the first thing we need to do is define an error that returns either null or it returns a string. Um, returning null signifies that there is no validation error. Um, returning a non-empty string or a non-null string signifies that there was a validation error and that non-empty string will be used as the error message. So we're going to do a switch statement on the property name and we're going to validate our customer name, at which case we're going to say our error is equal to validate customer name. And we're just going to make this really simple. We're going to say we want to return um, otherwise we're going to return null because passes validation. So very simple validation for our customer name. So what's going to happen is WPF again is going to validate by passing the property name um, as the indexer parameter and then we're going to call our validation and return the result which is either null or a non-empty string as the validation error message. Now the next thing that we want to do is we are actually going to um, go ahead and wrap these in a get validation error um, method. So we're going to say get validation error and property name. And then we're going to actually move this code here. And the reason we're doing this is we're going to actually add a is valid property. So let's go ahead and region this stuff out. We're going to keep our interface stuff fairly isolated. And then we'll create another region called validation. Take our read only array. So we're going to just kind of leave our interface members by themselves is basically what we're doing. Um, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a public is valid property. And what we want to do here is we want to say for each property and the properties that we're going to validate, We will check our validation error for that. Let's see if it's null. If it's not null, we'll return false because validation failed. Otherwise, we'll return true. So fairly simple. So if we're to look at this in a class diagram, higher fields out of the way. So we have our iData error info interface members. Um, we also have this is valid property, which will tell us obviously whether it's valid in a single call. And then um, we have all of our individual validation methods. So now that we have implemented all this code, we can actually hook it up to our view. So we're going to create a simple text box we're going to say the binding is equal to our model dot customer name. And we're going to say that the validate on data errors is equal to true and that the update source trigger is when the property changes. The next thing we need to do is uh, actually set our data context before we forget. So we're going to say window.resources. And we're going to create our XML namespace local, we're going to say, um, actually we want our models namespace, and we're going to say local 
um, actually, excuse me, it was our view model, view models that we want as our data context. So we're going to say view model. So we're going to say our view model. Or actually, let's do this on data context, like so. And then we will say our grid is equal to binding, or excuse me, static resource data context. Okay. There we go. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is if we are to go to our view model, we want to say public. We're just going to return. Um, let's do this. We say get and set. I'm going to say customer name equals David. Okay, simple enough. So if we're to run this guy, and let's see, what did we miss? I don't think we missed anything. I think our Dorner is outside of our boundaries. We're going to do There we go. So you can see that our validation just triggered. So if I type a name, our Adorner site, which is the red rectangle border around the text box goes away. Um, if our value is invalid, we get our Adorner site. Now the other common question is, okay, that's fine and dandy, but how do I display the actual validation error message? Um, this is fairly simple. We're going to declare a label. We're going to say the content um, first, we're going to give our text box a name in the XAML. We're going to call this um, customer name. And then our content um, will be bound to um, customer name um, path equals validation errors current item. And then I believe it is error content is the path. I may have that wrong, we'll find out. Oops, one too many brackets. Okay, so let's, oops. I think I declared the label over the text box. So we're going to change this to a stack panel. Okay. And there we go. So you can see that as I type and our value is valid, the label's content is set to essentially null. And then if it's invalid, we get our validation error message um, from our model class. So again, just to review the XAML, fairly simple. We're binding to the customer name, um, which is just the name that we gave the text box. We're binding to the text box itself. And then validation um, is actually an attached property uh, when we actually do validation. So it gets attached to the text box uh, control. And then we have access to the errors, which actually really only contains one validation error. Uh, validation and IData error info is kind of a one-to-one -one relationship um, current item error content. So the binding is fairly simple. Now, if we want to go a little bit further, what if I wanted to display or get rid of that red rectangle border and just have red text? We can go to our text box and let's kind of make our XAML a little bit more pretty here. And we could say validation um, error template and then we could say x null. And that will remove the Adorner site from our validation. So if we delete that, we no longer have the red 
rectangle border. And this will allow you to make the validation however you see fit um, in your view. And again, we could actually, for label, let's say font weight is bold, and let's say our foreground is red. And then there's our validation error that we're displaying. And again, this is all done in the MVVM pattern, so we're not um, breaking that pattern by any means. And let me think if I'm forgetting anything. The other things you can do, actually, you can specify the adorner site. Uh, so you can say validation.adorner site, and then we could actually say binding element name. And let's give our label a value, or excuse me, a, a name. And we'll call this adorner site. And we could go ahead and tell it where our donor site is located on our view. So again, now we can see that our label receives the red rectangle border. And there's ways you could actually override the donor template, I believe. Um, that we'll save for a later video down the road. I wanted to focus this one primarily on doing validation with iData error info. Now, final question is how do we propagate, how do we know whether our validation, um, how do we know whether our model is validated uh, from the view model? Well, because we have our model in the view model, defined in the view model, we can access the is valid property um, is one way to do it. And we can access the indexer. Now I implemented the interface explicitly, so we would have to say I got error info um, or excuse me, model as, and then we could access the indexer that way and get validation errors for a specific property if we want. Um, and then there's also the get validation errors method that we had defined on it as well to make that public. I believe that by default I made a private method, get validation errors. Um, yes, we made it a private method, get validation error, strictly for the property name. You could essentially expose another method called get validation errors um, and do it that way. There's also the validation class um, that has a get validation errors method you can call into, I believe. Um, so all kinds of different things you can do. But that's it for now. Um, I just wanted to do a video on iData error info. And that's it in a nutshell. Um, you can use the same exact steps to implement validation on your view model. Um, there's nothing special or different really you need to do. Um, so have fun. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you learned a little bit today. Uh, comments, feedbacks, um, post in the comments below. You can email me, visit me on my blog, Facebook page. Um, if you liked the video and it was useful, hit like. Guys, have a great weekend.